So it's been about two months since we installed our New Age Bold Series 3.0 garage cabinets. And since I posted that video, I've been getting a ton of questions about the cabinets. So I thought I'd put together a little video, hopefully answer some of those questions for you. So stick around. What's going on adventurers? My name's Travis. Welcome back to another project. The install of our New Age Bolt Series 3.0 garage cabinets went really well, uh, but since I posted that video, I've been getting a ton of questions about the cabinets. Uh, so I've been trying to answer them all in the comment section of that video, uh, but I thought I'd put together a little video here so uh, I can kind of explain some of those questions in a little more depth. Now, if you're wondering what video I'm talking about, I'll post a link here. Uh, you can click over to that video. We did a full video of the setup of these cabinets and then an entire walkthrough uh, of the cabinets so you can see how they function, how they work. And then I gave a bit of a review uh, after using them for only about a couple days. I also made another video uh, about our pegboard. I've been getting quite a few questions about the pegboard we installed, so I made a video on that. Again, I'll post a link. Uh, if you want to finish this video and then uh, check out those videos afterwards, I'll post a link in the description below. So after two months of using these cabinets, I've been really, really happy with the way they work. Uh, they still function great. Everything rolls around nice. The drawers work really well, and there is a ton of storage in them. We used to have quite the mess. We just had everything on uh, a table sitting in the garage. So having everything nice and tidy put away, it looks so much cleaner. and. It's crazy how much space these cabinets have. Uh, some of the overhead cabinets, I still don't have anything in them yet. It seems you guys want to get more information about the space behind the cabinets, underneath them, how to get power cords uh, run, as well as uh, if you can mount some of the lower cabinets uh, to the wall instead of having them on feet. So this video is all about answering those questions you guys had for me about these cabinets. Now I'm sure after watching this video, uh, there's still gonna be a ton of questions that come up. If you have any more questions, please post a comment uh, in the comment section below. If you're new to the channel, we are all about projects that add adventure to your life. Anything that gets you up off the couch and out the door on your next adventure. If you find this video is really helpful to you, please hit that like button and uh, just take a second, hit that subscribe button. It's really easy. You can click that little icon in the bottom right hand uh, corner and you can uh, follow along with all the cool projects we have coming down the line. So let's take a look and see if I can't answer some of those questions you had. So starting with these rolling tool cabinets, I had a couple questions about uh, mounting them on feet. So you can see with these center cabinets, we have the adjustable feet. On the rolling cabinets, they have free caster wheels. Someone was wondering if you would be able to mount uh, these tool cabinets on just those uh, adjustable feet. That way they would just stay in place. The problem is the way the feet mount. Uh, so the feet actually use a L-shaped uh, three bolt uh, pattern and the free caster wheels use four in kind of a box shape. So even if you were able to get an extra set of feet from New Age, uh, I don't think you'd be able to mount these rolling cabinets on feet. Now that doesn't mean that you can't mount them on feet. Uh, you know, you have all the mounting hardware, uh, you know, if, if you weld or I'm sure you could figure out some sort of custom thing and use the original holes, uh, but you aren't able to mount them on feet from New Age, you'd have to figure that out yourself. Another question I had was if you could mount these lower cabinets to the wall and kind of do like a floating cabinet thing, uh, take the feet off of it and just have them floating. Now starting with the rolling cabinets, there's no holes in the back of the rolling cabinets, so you'd have to drill your own holes. Um, but more concerning, the back isn't that reinforced. 
Uh, I think if you had a full cabinet of tools and then mounted it on the wall, there's no reinforcement on the back there. So I think it would just be too much weight and I wouldn't be surprised if the back of the cabinet just, just pulled away. These cabinets are meant to have the weight on the feet and then by mounting them to the wall, uh, that prevents them from moving or falling forward. When it comes to the overhead cabinets, they're a bit of a different story. Uh, you can mount those to the wall and have them floating. I think because they're small enough, uh, the back of the cabinet has enough uh, structural integrity to hold the weight that you'd put in those cabinets. But when it comes to these lower cabinets, they can hold a lot more weight. Uh, so I don't think it would be a great idea to mount them straight to the wall. These center cabinets have holes at the back. Uh, so you can mount them to the wall again so that they don't move or pull away. Um, but when it comes to just mounting these directly to the wall and removing the feet, I would say it would depend on how much weight uh, you would be putting in this cabinet. If you're going to be loading it up, I don't know if there is enough uh, structural integrity on that back to hold it up. That goes along with the larger upright cabinets as well. Um, again, they're meant to be mounted to the wall to hold them in place, but I think most of the weight is supposed to be sitting on those feet. So I think those feet are very important at the bottom of all the cabinets uh, where the feet attach. You can see it's a little more reinforced, so it's meant to take that weight. Now it's getting a lot of questions about space behind these cabinets and running power, how we did it. So walk you through our setup here. Uh, there are a couple different mounting options for these lower cabinets, which would give you different amounts of space behind. So we'll get this rolling cabinet out of the way. With this rolling cabinet out of the way, you can see we have a bit of space behind these two center cabinets. Now this depends on the way you mount these center cabinets. So uh, these cabinets can be pushed all the way back to the wall and secured to the wall so they don't move. Uh, the reason why we decided to go with them further forward uh, was then it matches up to the upright cabinets uh, visually at the front. Everything's nice and in a line. If you had these cabinets pushed back because they're not as deep, uh, they would be recessed a little bit. So they look similar to the overhead cabinets, how they're recessed from the uh, tall upright cabinets. So it just depends on the look you want to go with. So we didn't want a big overhang on the uh, on our tabletop here. So we have these cabinets pulled forward, but what makes this really handy is our uh, closest power outlet is actually behind these cabinets. So if we had them pushed all the way back, we'd be blocking that power outlet and we'd have to run an extension cord from a lot further away. So having these pulled forward, we're able to access that power outlet. So if you're hoping to run power behind these cabinets, these center ones, if you mount them uh, further forward, you'll have about six inches behind these cabinets. And then visually, when you roll the rolling tool chests into place, uh, if you keep them nice and level, you'll have the same uh, distance, about six inches behind those. Now with the tall upright cabinets, we have those mounted to the wall. Uh, so by screwing them to the wall, you're not gonna have any space to run power behind those. But luckily, there's tons of space with the adjustable feet uh, below. So you can run power underneath and hidden. You know, you can put it back close to the wall, but underneath and you won't see those power cords. So looking underneath, uh, you can see the way we ran our power. So we have it from that outlet behind these cabinets here. And then we actually have power run into this cabinet uh, as a bit of a charging station. At the bottom of these two center cabinets, uh, as well as the two upright cabinets, uh, there is a hole with a rubber grommet. Uh, it's about, uh, about two inches wide. So you can run an extension cord up through there uh, and then have power into those cabinets. So what we've done is just use a power bar, run an extension cord hidden behind these cabinets. We run it down and up into this cabinet. Now, if you wanted to have power uh, into your tall upright cabinets, uh, there's enough space behind here. You can run a power cord across and then underneath the cabinet and up into that cabinet. So 
So another set of chords we have run is for our stereo here. So the way this stereo works is it actually has a subwoofer that is where you plug everything into and then power for the uh, head unit here and the speakers come from that uh, subwoofer. So we have that hidden away behind this cabinet here. We've got a deep freeze um, in the garage here. So it's just tucked in behind there. So we had to run the power up to the head unit as well as the speakers that we have up above uh, on top of the cabinets. So the way we did this was running a power cord underneath one of the big upright cabinets. So we have a bit of an opening behind the stereo here uh, and that's because we installed this pegboard so we've got a little bit of a space to run a power cord up on top of this tabletop. Now without having this pegboard here if you had this tabletop pushed back against the wall there is no way uh, to run power up onto this tabletop. Uh, you would probably have to drill a hole through the tabletop to get power up to it. The reason we have this hole is uh, when we installed our pegboard, you can see here behind me, uh, there was a little bit of a gap at either end of the pegboard. Uh, and then once we butted up the tabletop up to that pegboard, it left a little square hole there and we were able to run the power up through there. Now we ran this plug, uh, it was a smaller plug for the stereo. Uh, if you're going to be running a full power cord, uh, you know, an extension cord plug, um, we don't have enough space to run that through here. But some of the small stuff, like the uh, power coming to the stereo, as well on the other end of the cabinets, uh, we've got our power going up to our overhead lights here. Uh, it's just a nice thin power cord with a small end so you can fish that up through the tabletop there. Now if you're hoping to get power up here, maybe say have a power bar so you could have your chargers and stuff on top of this tabletop, uh, you'd probably have to drill a hole uh, through the tabletop. You know, if you drilled a hole and they got a rubber grommet to cover it up, make it look a little bit nicer. Um, if you mounted the lower cabinets further forward like we did, you'd have that six inches at the back there. So if you measured, you could drill a hole up through there and then have a spot to run power through there. Now I did another video uh, just specifically for this pegboard and I kind of went a little more in depth uh, with how we ran the power and the, the space that we have there. Uh, so I'll post a link if you want to check that out. So I got a couple questions about just general storage and, and things like that. So I thought I'd just do a really quick brief walkthrough of the storage uh, in each of these cabinets here so you can get an idea of uh, the amount of stuff that you can put in it. So uh, as you can see up top there we've got our pontoons for our vintage boat restoration. Still working on that, uh, hoping to get that done here in the next couple months. Um, so you can see there's, there's a ton of space on the top there. Uh, those are pretty massive. I think they're about 12 feet long there. So uh, you can toss those up there. Uh, there's uh, the uh, cabinets can hold quite a bit of weight. Uh, so we'll just walk over and we'll just start taking a look here. So opening up one of our big upright cabinets here. Uh, you can see we've just got all our chemicals and everything in there. So uh, we've got one, two, three, plus the bottom, basically four shelves of usable space. Uh, so you can see we've got just a ton of stuff in each one of these shelves. Uh, so these big upright cabinets can hold a lot of stuff. Uh, there's also a coat rack um, hanger option at the top. We don't have it in, uh, but you can uh, put a uh, coat hanging rack uh, in the top. So if you want to take the shelves out and hang a bunch of stuff. Uh, these overhead bins, just opening them up. There's tons of space. There's not uh, a ton of organizing options in here. You'd probably have to get um, some sort of aftermarket uh, shelving system or something like that if you wanted something uh, a little more organized than we have here. But uh, they're just big open spaces that uh, just have a ton of room in here. Like I said, you can see we still haven't really even utilized all of this. We still have a ton of stuff and open space here. I think this one, yeah, we actually used a little bit. So 
Uh, we've got some toe straps and just, just loose stuff up there. I'm hoping maybe down the road to get some sort of organizing stuff, like I said, a bit of a shelving system or, or something like that so you can utilize a little more of the space. Uh, going to the other overhead cabinet here, you can see there's that coat rack uh, I was talking about at the very top there. So again, you've got tons of space. We've kind of got the boxes of uh, tools, those those kind of odd ones that don't really fit in the tool chest there. Uh, so we made a shelf for that. And, and the shelves are super adjustable. You can really adjust them. I think uh, you can move them up and down about uh, six inches at a time. So you should be able to get a good setup. You know, you don't have to have them nice and even like we do. And going across, we've got our pegboard there. Uh, there's uh, quite a few tools that we have on there. Um, you know, hook, using all the different hooks and stuff like that, uh, we're able to really put a lot of stuff there. Uh, then going down into one of the two tool chests, kind of made this a bit of a automotive tool chest, so uh, somewhat organized the wrenches. They're just tossed in there. I was working on the razor a little while ago, so I need to tidy those up. But again, there's these, uh, the two bottom ones here are really deep, so you can put a lot of stuff in these. And again, just tossing stuff in, bit of an electrical drawer and everything. Uh, so going across into these uh, center cabinets here, opening them up. Uh, we've got all our power tools in there, so you can see we've just got a pile of tools uh, in the top there, and then looking down below, uh, that's where we've got our uh, charging station and everything down there. So uh, we've got the power coming up through the uh, grommet there, comes up to a power bar, and then we're able to uh, have everything plugged in there. All right, coming over to the other cabinet. This one's a little less exciting, just some storage for a few other things in there. And then our uh, last tool cabinet here, uh, we made this one just more of a bit of a general one. So we've got just our different pliers and uh, screwdrivers, all that stuff. And then the bottom there. Uh, these bottom bins have tons and tons of space. Uh, I wouldn't mind looking into some different organizing options. You know, if you could figure out uh, a way to utilize the, the depth of these, uh, these tool bins a little bit more, uh, you could really put away a lot of stuff. But we have just a ton of stuff here. So uh, we still have a ton of space and we don't have it filled. So once we actually have it filled, I might start digging into it a little bit more for more organizing, but it's been working really, really well for us so far. So I hope I was able to answer at least a couple of your guys' questions. Uh, you know, we had a ton of different questions. I tried to uh, group the most uh, common questions I had been getting together and answer them today. Uh, but again, if you have any other questions that came up during this video or any of the other uh, videos we did on these new age cabinets, please post a comment uh, in the comment section below. Overall, these cabinets have been awesome uh, over the past two months. Just being able to organize and have all your stuff nicely tucked away has been so great. I really like uh, the way that we set up our stereo too. It's nicely hidden away, but it, it just adds an awesome sound system uh, in the garage. I really love being out here now. If you haven't already, please take a second, hit that subscribe button. We'd really appreciate the support. And if you found this video helpful, hit that like button. Again, I'll post a couple links uh, to the other videos I was talking about. If you haven't seen our other New Age uh, Bold Series 3.0 uh, cabinet videos, you can check them out. They're really nice cabinets. If you're looking to get a good garage organizing system, they're awesome really customizable. You can really come up with a set uh, that will fit your garage perfect. So that's it for this video, but I hope to see you back again really soon for another adventure project.